Welcome back. So in this uh, lecture, we will solve another example problem using the branch and bound algorithm. This is uh, this example is for a knapsack problem. In our previous lectures, we learned how to solve uh, examples uh, using binary decision variables or general integers. So in NAPSEC we can uh, find, we can implement this branch and bound algorithm uh, using a different uh, idea. So in this uh, lecture we will learn how to uh, implement branch and bound algorithm for this NAPSEC problem. Okay, assume that we are given a knapsack problem. Remember, what was a knapsack problem? Let's first remember it. Uh, in a knapsack problem, we simply have a single constraint. And in the objective function, we want to maximize a revenue. It can be a, util a utility uh, or the value that you are obtaining. So there are a number of items. In this example, there are six items. Each one of these six items have their own utility values, the values for you. And uh, let's say you want to place these items into your bag, into your knapsack, and uh, your bag has a capacity of eight, let's say, kilograms and each one of these items have their own kilograms, so you cannot exceed the capacity of your knapsack. Uh, so you want to choose the items, which items you pl to place in your uh, knapsack uh, by, uh, I mean, without exceeding the capacity and by maximizing the value of these items to you. The idea is this. And in this example, for these six items, the values are given. This Ri represents the values of the items. And they are the coefficients in the objective function. Look, this is 6y1, 6 is this one, 6y2, this one, 4y3, this one. Okay. And subject to my only constraint is to not to exceed the capacity of the knapsack. And the capacity is this 2 times y1 plus three times y2, okay, these are the weights, and I'm multiplying with the uh, y values. y is my binary decision variable. It indicates whether we select item i or not, okay? And uh, since it is a binary decision variable, it means that you can select, you can use one item only one times, okay? You, have, you can select, either select it or not select it. You cannot say that I want from this item, I want two, three, and etc. It's a different version of an EPSEC problem. And we are going to solve this example using the branch and bound algorithm. And as a rule, we are said that we will use this breadth first search approach. Okay. So in order to find a relaxed solution for an EPSEC problem, we will use an algorithm which is called value per unit of weight approach, okay? In order to obtain a relaxed solution, we will use this approach and this approach will provide the optimal solutions for the relaxed problems. Relaxed means if we relax the decision variables to take values between zero and one, okay? Continues between zero and one. So how this approach works? Uh, Actually, the idea is very simple. Assume that, uh, look, in the objective function, we have, let's say, six times y1 and the rest, and subject to, we have two times y1 as a constraint should be less than or equal to seven. Now, when you compare two, let's say, items, y1 and y2, when you compare these items, look, the value of the first item is six and value of the second item is also six. Remember, we are trying to maximize the value. So it means that we are indifferent between the first and second items because their, uh, their values are the same, six. But when you look at their weights, we see that the first item is uh, lighter than the second item. So it consumes less space in uh, in my bag. So it means that I may prefer, 
item Y, item one over two, because it's lighter and it has the same uh, value. Okay, so what we try to select is, we select the items with a higher value in the objective function and the lower value in the constraint. So if we combine this, we can just find the ratio of for each item. So this is for item one. For item one, the objective function coefficient divided by the weight. So it is value per weight. Okay, and we want to select the items which has the highest value per weight. So we calculate for each item, this is item two, we calculate the objective function value divided by the weight. For item three, for all items, we calculate this and then we order them in decreasing order so that we want the items which has the highest value the most. And in uh, if we do this, as you can see, item one is the best alternative, item two is the second, three is the third, and etc. In this example, for sake of easiness, the items are already ordered uh, according to their value per weight. Okay, so now having this information, we need to select these items and let's see how to do this. So look, this is our objective function. And these are the ratios. And uh, it means that we want to place item one first. It is the first item. And we try to make its value equal to one. So we want to make y1 equal to one. What happens if I make its value equal to one in, your, in this objective function? Look, I make it equal to one. All others assume zero. So it means that this will consume two kilograms in my bag. So I already have seven kilograms. Is it possible to make its value equal to one? Yes, then do it. Now the remaining capacity is five because I used two kilograms for the first item. Now select the second one and try to make its value equal to one. If I make this equal to one, three kilograms, the remaining capacity is five. Can I do it? Yes, then do it. So the remaining capacity is two. So I uh, placed the second item also. What about the third one? Can I do its value equal to one? Okay, look at this one. Uh, if I do it four kilograms, but the remaining capacity is two, it means that I cannot do it. So this third item is the first one for which I cannot place it completely in my knapsack. But the thing is currently I am solving the relaxed problem. All yi are zero and one. So what can I do? I don't need to make its value equal to one. I can make its value as something decimal between zero and one. And how can I do it? Look, my the weight of this item is four. The remaining capacity is two. So I will set the value of y3 equal to remaining capacity divided by its weight. It will be 0 0.5. So if I make y3 value equal to 0 0.5 here, so four times 0 0.5 will be equal to two and it will satisfy the capacity. And all others after this point will be zero. Okay, so we find the relaxed solution by this approach. I completely take the first one. I completely take the second one. I cannot take the third one. But remember, when I say the first one, second one, third one, I'm referring to this order. I am. I ordered the items with respect to their values per uh, weight. And the first one is the one which has the highest value per weight. Okay, and I took that first one, the second one, but the third one, I couldn't take it completely, but I took a portion of it, 0 0.5. So now the solution is 1, 1, 0 0.5. Okay, so this is the approach. This is the solution approach that we, we will use uh, in this, uh, to solve this knapsack problem using the branch and bound algorithm. So the solution is this. The first one is one, the second one is one, third one is 0 0.5, all others are zero. 
And what is the objective function value of this solution? Just put this into your objective function. It was 6y1 plus 6y2, remember? Just put this 1, 1, 0 0.5 and we obtain 14. Remember, this is a maximization problem. And in a maximization problem, the relaxed solution will give you an upper bound. The optimal solution to the relaxed problem will give you an upper bound. So uh, this solution provides an upper bound. This is the solution to the relaxed problem and it provides an upper bound for us. And we will start from the root node, remember, in the branch and bound. And there in the root node, all of these yi's will be relaxed. And since there is a non-integer value here, we need to branch and branch on this variable. We will branch on this variable and we will set that y3 equal to 0 on the one hand side and y3 equal to 1 on the other hand side. But the thing is, we can also obtain an integer solution using this initial solution that we found. And we can make use of that integer solution as a lower bound. How to do it? Look, this is one, this is one, all others are zero. This is the only non-integer value. I wanted its value equal to one, but because of the capacity of the bag, I couldn't do it. Therefore, I did it 0 0.5. But what happens if I do its value equal to zero? So I will still have some remaining capacity, two kilograms of capacity in my bag, but it will be a feasible solution. So y1 value equal to one, y2 value equal to one, and all others are zero. This is a feasible integer solution. I'm not saying that it's optimal, but it's a feasible integer solution. And I can make use of this as my lower bound. So while recording my into my table in this root node, I can say that my lower bound is 12, my upper bound is 14, and I can calculate the gap between the values, uh, the gap in between these two. Okay, I can do it, uh, and we will. I will show the rest of the branch and bound algorithm in the next slide. So as I told you, this third item is non-integer. So we are branching on this non-integer item. This is my upper bound. And also I have a lower bound. I, I know an integer solution, which has a value of 12. Okay, but we are trying to find the optimal solution. Okay, now what we do, uh, when we fix the value of y3 is equal to zero, remember this is our on original uh, problem. And when the value of y3 is equal to zero, simply we remove y3 from this model. We keep the remaining ones, but remove y3. Look, this is the remaining part of the problem. And this is still a knapsack problem, the same problem. Okay, we will use the same approach to solve it. How? Remember, the uh, maximum uh, value per weight item is item one. So I will try to make y1 equal to one. So can I do it? The remaining capacity is seven. So I, I, I just started from scratch. So I'm not using this information anymore. I just consider, try to solve this problem starting from the scratch. So try to make y1 equal to one. Can I do it? The weight is two, the capacity is seven, and yes, I can do it. So the, if I place this item into my bag, the remaining capacity is five. Next item is uh, two. Can I make its value equal to one? And since the weight is three and the capacity is five, yes, I can do. And if I do it, the remaining capacity is two units. Five minus three, the remaining capacity is two. The next item now is not three. The next item is four, okay? And can I uh, place this item into my knapsack? The weight is one and the remaining capacity is two. And yes, I can. So Y4, I can completely place it into my bag and the remaining capacity will be one. Next item is five. Can I place this Y5 completely into my knapsack? No, because the capacity is one and the weight is two. 
So what percentage of this item can I place? Y5. So the remaining capacity divided by the weight of this item, 0 0.5. Okay, so the solution will be 1, 1. Y3 is fixed to 0 here. Y4 is 1. Y5 is 0 0.5 and the rest is 0. And when you find this solution, if you place these into your objective function, these values, you will obtain 13.5, okay? So in this node, it is 13.5, and now I need to make a decision. What should I do with this one? And as you can see, you cannot fathom by infeasibility, you cannot fathom by integrality because this is 0 0.5, and you cannot fathom because of bound, because the best integer solution that we found is 12, but the objective function value in this node that we obtain is 13.5. So it means that we need to branch. Okay. Now I have one, two, three branches open. And according to breadth first search, I need to select this one. I need to fix y3 value equal to one. And in our original model here, if I fix its value equal to one, what happens? So this is one and this is one. So this is four now, and I can move this four to right hand side and say that the remaining capacity is three. Okay, so this is the remaining problem. You see, there is no y three, its value is one now, and the remaining capacity reduced to three. And I use the same solution idea again. What do I do? I start from the first item, First item, y1, can I make its value equal to 1? The weight is 2 and the capacity is 3. And the thing is, yes, I can do. If I do it, the remaining capacity will be 1. The next item is 2. Can I make its value equal to 1? The remaining capacity is 1 and the weight is 3. So it means that I cannot do it 1. But I can place only a percentage, a portion of it. And what is that percentage? It will be remaining capacity for Y2, remaining capacity divided by its weight, okay? And all others will be zero. Now, in this solution, what do we have? The value of uh, first variable is one, second is one over three, and remember, in this branch, Y3 value is fixed to one, and all others are zero. Now, I have solved this problem and the objective function value of this problem is 12. Can I fathom it because of infeasibility? No. Can I fathom it because of integrality? No, because this is not, no, not integer. Can I fathom it because of bound? Look, previously I found an integer solution with a value of 12. And the objective function value of this solution is also 12. So I already know an integer solution with 12 and the best integer solution that I can obtain here is 12. So no need to consider it. The best thing that you can get from here is just an alternative optima. So don't consider the rest, fathom it. Fathom because of bound. Okay, so if I summarize what we did until now, we started from this first LP, we found its objective value, then Y3 was not integer, so we uh, fixed its value equal to 0 and 1. We first considered this version and found this solution, and since Y5 is not integer, we said that we need to branch on Y5. And then according to breadth first search, we moved to this one, we considered this problem, and when we solved it, although it is not integer, the objective function value of this solution uh, is equal to the best integer solution that I already know, therefore no need to consider this side, so I fathomed it because of bound. Now I have two open nodes, and these open nodes are y5 equals to five, zero and one, so if we start from this side, so look, up to the root node, we have y3 is already fixed to zero and y5 is already, uh, we fix it to zero. In this original problem, this is zero, this is zero, they disappear. 
And the remaining problem is this one. And on this remaining problem, I use the same solution idea. First start with Y1. Can I place it into my knapsack? Yes. So make its value equal to one, remaining capacity is five. The second item is Y2. Can I make its value equal to one? Yes. The remaining capacity is two. The next item is Y4. Can I make its value equal to one? Yes. So the remaining capacity is one. The next item is Y6. Can I make its value equal to one? No, because its weight exceeds the remaining capacity. So what can I place at most, uh, what percentage of this item? It is one over two. So the solution here is this one. And the objective function value, if you place this solution into here, the objective function, we obtained this. The best integer solution was 12 and we found 13.2. We cannot fathom because of integrality. We cannot fathom because of infeasibility. We cannot fathom because of bound. It means that we need to branch. Okay. So this one, again, we decided to branch on. Now I have three open nodes and according to breadth first search, I need to select this one. Use the same idea on this side. So y3 is equal to zero and y5 is equal to one. So the remaining problem is this one. And when you implement the same solution algorithm, okay, we found it, we found this solution. And as you can see, all of them are integers. All of them are integers. So we fathom because of integrality. Now, this is my new integer solution. Okay, this is new integer solution. Now, let's see what is the uh, branch and bound looks like. So, we branched on Y5 and we considered this one, we sold it, and then we decided to branch on this variable, and we had this and this, and then According to Brad's first search, we considered this problem. And when we solved this problem, we obtained an integer solution with a value of 13.4. Now there are two open branches, open nodes, this one and this one. But the thing is, my integer solution value is now better than their bound, which is 13.2. Okay, integer solution is better than their best possible values. It means that no need to consider these two branches at all, fathom by bound, okay? So this is the complete solution now, and the optimal solution is found in this branch with the values of decision variables and the objective function. Okay, so if I com uh, complete this discussion, uh, I also recorded the nodes and their gap values here. When we started in node zero, we also say that, okay, if I just remove this and make it equal to zero, it's an integer solution with an objective function value of 12. So I just started with 12. Look, I didn't start it with negative infinity because of this integer solution. If you say that, uh, if you don't use this idea, you have to start with negative infinity, okay? Then when I solved this problem, I obtained this upper bound and calculated the gap value by best possible minus best found divided by best possible. Then when I solved the second node, uh, the upper bounds and lower bounds are not updated. This is the best integer. And this 14 is the parent of the open node, which is 14 this one, the gap value is the same. So when I solve the second one, the uh, integer solution is not updated, but now the open nodes are these, only open nodes, and their parent is this one. So the upper bound is 13.5, it is updated. So when I consider this branch, I have these open nodes, this open node, and the parent of the open nodes is this one, the best parent, it is 13.5. That's why we have this upper bound. And when I solve this fourth node, I obtain this integer solution 13.4. And since this is 
the best integer solution and it is better than the parent bound of the open nodes, I immediately fathom the uh, fathom there by bound and the gap value reduces to zero and this is the integer solution, okay? So the idea of the branch and bound algorithm is exactly the same. There is no difference in the idea, but for this knapsack problem, instead of using the simplex algorithm to solve the relaxed problem, we used this value per unit weight approach to find the optimal solution to the relaxed problems. And that's all about this uh, problem, this example.